Ford extricate him from the love triangle that has developed between Denise, Louise, and her bottle of Febreze. <laughs> Bert's got his foot caught under the pedal bin, and still Brian Conley's dog holds his secret. Can it? Yes! All right, love, one sugar and about that much milk. Whoops, I'm on. Good evening, porn merchants, pimps, filth mongers, and other viewers of Channel 4. <laughs> I'm Barry Gossie. But now, please welcome Harry Roy Hill. Oh, I've been to Nice in the Isle of Crete to love some champagne on a yacht. I moved like Carlo in Monte Carlo to show them what I got. I've been undressed by kids and I've seen some things that a fella ain't supposed to see. Hey, baby, I've been to paradise. But I've never been to sea. Sea! 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 It is a tin of juicy sea. It is a tin of juicy sea. The caterer is there! There's some sweet sounds going down. I can't help thinking that if Jesus had smartened himself up for the court appearance, things might have turned out very differently. <laughs> hey, it only takes a minute to put a comb through it, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> well, just because the fly then on the totem pole don't make him the chief do it. <laughs> oh, you ill behaviour with your ill behaviour. <laughs> Bomb disposal experts, school in the crisis, safe pair of hands, brilliant at Kerplunk. Hmm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you for a game, forget it. You won't even get close. Just <laughs> sit back and watch a true master at work. Mm. Oh, the naughty horses, the way. Mm -hmm. mm, the naughty horses. <laughs> You're just too good to be true. I can't take my eyes off of you. Oh, I do apologise, madam. I thought this was the gents, as you were. <laughs> If only he'd worn something a little less loose-fitting, hmm? a belt, something like that, but no! As it was, Pontius Pilate had his card marked from the moment he walked up from the cells. <laughs> well, nice to see the Welsh have got their car industry sorted out. Hmm? The Welsh cars. Hmm? The main problem with the Welsh cars, the names were too long to fit on the bonnets, weren't they? <laughs> I'm thinking here particularly of the Hachel of the Fairs at that end. Oh, come here, let them have fun. It's a bit of 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 a they had to widen the bonnets to take the names. There was a concomitant increase in the sides of the roads. Oh, I'm quite happy to use that word, concomitant. <laughs> oh, yeah, they had to widen the bonnets, widen the roads. They ended up working on a different gauge to everybody else. Hey, baby, I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. One more push. Congratulations. It's a girl. <laughs> the naughty horses, though, eh? Mm, the naughty horses. Mm, mm, they touch our queen, don't they? Mm, they touch our queen. The dirty horses. See, I can't help thinking that riding around on a donkey doesn't exactly inspire confidence, does it, eh? Mm? Hey, who's the cat on the donkey? It's the son of God. Oh, yeah, I really think so. <laughs> I really think it's the son of God. Well, a few of you have written in and asked what has happened to my three-year-old adopted son, little Alan Hill. Well, there's no nice way to put this, but basically, he was eaten by ants. No, <laughs> oh, shame. How many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? My big brother, Alan. If it's too hard, I can't understand it. Hey, Harry, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? In the event of a light bulb blowing in the psychiatric hospital and it requiring replacement. Yes. How many? Mm, well, I don't see any reason why one shouldn't be able to do it. I'll say one. Yes, it is one, but the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs> the 
be a fool, Alan. How can something like a light bulb exhibit an emotion like wanting? No, it's one, all right, but they've probably got a, someone at the hospital, a maintenance man or such like, to do it for them. Yes. <laughs> hey, Harry, how come earlier on I saw you painting up little Alan in a sugar and water solution? I don't think we need to go into that. <laughs> Leading him over to the ant's nest. I do like the taste of sealed. 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 Mm. Mm. Tomato sauce or oil. Lovely, juicy sealed. But, Alan, if you're here, who's arranging all the woodland creatures into alphabetical order? Oh, not that again. Listen, if Space Station Badger bombs like it did last week, the woodland creature ABC song is the only way we've got of finishing the show on a positive note. <laughs> Imagine it, Alan, all the woodland creatures arranged in alphabetical order set to music. Oh, I'm getting a lump in my throat just thinking about it. <laughs> who's the star guest? Russ Abbott. You got Russ Abbott? <laughs> What's the control of Channel 4 think of that? Don't ask. <laughs> that six phrases are two hundred thousand pounds each. Eight friends. That's Gary. Ah, Harry, come and sit down. Now, now I'm not going to beat about the bush. You know that I don't like you personally, and I think the shows you make are terrible. Yes. Look at the money I've spent on you over the years. Hundreds of pounds, and still no one's heard of you. Why can't you be famous like Jonathan Creek? Well, there's a different sort of thing, though. Listen, Harry, I'm under pressure from C4 Top Brass. The outboard motor? Yes, the outboard motor feels the show needs to be more sexy. Sexy? From now on, I want you and the rest of the cast to wear your pants outside your trousers. What? Like the Backstreet Boys. But no arguments. I'm doing it. Look. All of us at C4 are. Oh, God, I don't know where the money's gone, Harry. I'm stony broke. I've put my wife on the game and I'm paying for the news every own pocket. Oh, why do they start? So, you see, Alan, it's come to this. You'd better start arranging them wooden creatures. And, Alan? Yes, Harry? you got to use it up. <laughs> Ain't nothing left in this old world I care about. So it's one, two, three, shake your body down. Shake it up down. One, two, three, and shake. Mum, I don't like it. I don't like it, Mum. <laughs> all right, from the top of page 12. The Bratverse Tridolomite tincture is all but used up, Lieutenant Panten Pro-V, and we need more power if we're to make it from the clutches of the evil scurf lord, Darth Camembert. Russ, that's your line. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> but the Bratverse Tridolomite tincture is... Uh, excuse me, but why am I called Lieutenant Pantane Pro-V? Uh, well, it's set in a time in the future where human beings have been largely wiped out by the scalp-conditioned scurf. The badgers have taken over and shampoo is at a premium and thus confers high status. Exactly. You did read the notes, Russ, didn't you? Uh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> ah, Russ Abbott, welcome. How's the atmosphere? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> the atmosphere, you know. <laughs> I love an atmosphere. <laughs> no, forget it. What's the point? Happened with the script? Well, there, there, there are one or two things that I'd like... You do think it'll be all right, Russ, don't you? I didn't want to do it, but the badgers have got me over a barrel. What's it like on the outside, Russ? Get this message to Little and Large. Tell them I'll do Panto. Anything. <laughs> you don't want to do it, do you? No, 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 no. no. I, I love the script. It's very strong, isn't it? You see, shampoos have been elevated to positions of high status. Exactly, yes. And this all takes place in the future after the scurf epidemic. Scurf? The scalp condition that is spread by the crows. What's he going on about? It's a trick. He wants to pull out. I can sense it. No, oh, I knew I should have stuck with the Badger Parade. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? The doors are locked, you know. Uh, yes, yes. I, I'm just stretching my legs. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Gareth, we rely more and more on the star guest to carry the thing. Well, he's signed a contract, hasn't he? Well, that's partly why I'm here. Russ. I hope you don't mind, but there is the small match of the... <laughs> Russ? What the... It is fate! <laughs> ah, what something is... You. Oh. <laughs> this, this, this room's bigger than it looks, isn't it? <laughs> right. Top of page 12. <clears throat> I'm afraid we cannot increase the Bratwurst Tridolomite tincture as they are influenced by the Parmicide orders. Better. Enter Alberto Balsam, looking anxious. <laughs> A 
That's all very well, but is it entertainment? <laughs> Naughty horses, the way. Hmm? The no Oh, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Concomitant, yes. Concomitant. <laughs> See what I'm worried about with the horses? Hmm? They're in with the royal family, aren't they, the horses? They're like that with the royals. Oh, we know it goes on, we turn a blind eye. We know there's no real reason why the Queen in the 21st century should ride around on a big brown mammal. Hmm? We, <laughs> we allow it to go on, don't we? Hmm? The horses who like to walk everywhere. Oh, but every now and again they'll take a horse box. Hmm? Oh, they'll use our transport system when it suits them. <laughs> the hypocrites. What I'm worried about is with the tacit approval of the Queen, the horses will gain access to Buckingham Palace. Hmm? They'll use the dumb waiter system to get about. Hmm? Oh, yeah, they're clever. Hmm? They're clever, see? Hmm? They'll live off the complimentary sugars in the guest bedrooms. Hmm? Oh, yeah, they're clever. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> Sugar. We'll end up with 30 or 40 horses living at the taxpayer's expense. <laughs> is that what we want? Is it? That's why I'd like to see front door Buckingham Palace, cattle grid. <laughs> uh, it's a horse. I'm a horse, man. Hear what I'm saying? Your queen and me, we like that. She's my foxy lady. She likes to run her hands through my mane. I'm her main man. Hear what I'm saying? I'm like a camel, man. Only without the hum. How dare you talk about our queen in this way? I am a horse. I carry your queen. I got a mister on my back. Where her ass has been. <laughs> Dirty horses. <laughs> Good evening, I'm John Snow. <laughs> and here is the... Oh, me piles! News. <laughs> Vanessa Feltz crossed with Nicholas Soames to produce a child that cannot be born. And tonight, we ask the question, what would Jesus look like if he was still alive? Well, Robert Powell played him in the film, so presumably, if he was still alive, he'd look a bit like... Robert Powell. <laughs> the problem is, of course, the Queen Mum, she's got tiny feet. She's only a size two. She's going to get her feet caught in the grid on the way into the palace. <laughs> and tonight, as part of the government's campaign to reduce dogs fouling the footpaths, we name and shame some of those fouling dogs. First up, Pauline on the pavement <laughs> by the pillar box. <laughs> Arthur in the gutter by the spa. <laughs> Mark and Martin on the corner of Cambridge Road where it meets the high street and Michelle in the sandpit in the kiddies' playground. <laughs> Pauline, Arthur, Mark, Martin and Michelle. The fowls. <laughs> Basically, you've got to persuade the Queen Mum to put on a pair of snowshoes before she goes in. Well, that's all from me, Jon Snow. Good night. Coming up on Channel 4, Russ Abbott, Carl Lagerfeld and the Space Station Badger. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.